So if you're thinking about driving the Bolivian Altiplano, do yourself a favor, don't. <laughs> Please don't. If you want to drive across it like crazy me, yeah, it is not easy. It is a huge challenge. Hey everyone, my name is Alex. I'm an ex-medical student who sold all his belongings in 2012 to travel around the world. 50 countries and the adventure continues. All right guys, welcome back to my wonderful hostel I've been to for the last uh, six days. And uh, for the next four days, I will be in some of the most remote parts of Bolivia. It's gonna be 450 kilometers of no services. That's no food, no water, no gas. An additional 22 liters of fuel, an additional 12 liters of water, and I gotta hope that I don't fall and that everything stays in one place. As it's some of the most incredible landscape you've ever seen. An extinct volcano, the desert of Dali, uh, the rock tree, the rock desert. There's so many incredible sites coming up. It's called the Bolivian Altiplano, and basically there is nothing. A few tour cars come by, but if something happens, I think mean, I'm in big trouble. Make smart choices. You cannot be in a hurry because uh, that's when you make mistakes. On the road here and uh, it's going to be a crazy off-road adventure for the next four days. Hopefully I'll make it. <laughs> so long, last gas station for 450 kilometers. <laughs> oh man. Now what I failed to mention is that for the last four days it's been raining, which is why I haven't left the town of Uyuni. And as you can see, it's barely drying up. So we'll see if all my preparation will uh, get me through this amazing challenge. The adventure begin, let's go. My back's already hurting. Uh, if you can hear my voice, is not still because all the bumps. All right, it's been uh, two hours on a stupid, crazy road. And my body hurts, the motorcycle's falling apart. Everything's all loose now. Uh, it's been real tough. It's the last place to get food, so I'm gonna eat here, stock up, and just head on out over these crazy roads. And they're horrible. I hate them. All right, so today on the menu we have uh, pasta, chicken, and potato. Not bad for uh, two U.S. dollars in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> betting that they have not done any maintenance to this road in the last four years. So Bolivia, what are you doing? What are you spending your money on? Right, welcome to hour four of this terrible road and my back is killing me. Ugh. I'm constantly fighting all the stuff bouncing against me, bouncing back, pushing it. Man, my back is so shot. It hurts so bad right now. This part looks fine because I took a break here, but all the other parts, there's holes. So when you go over the holes, it goes da, 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 da. So you're literally doing this for like four hours. <laughs> oh, it sucks so bad. I can only share the pain I'm in right now. Two, three more days of this. <laughs> if I lose any water or any fuel, that just bounces off for some reason. Uh, I am screwed. Anyway, back on the road. See you there. Literally in the middle of nowhere, right into a carnival celebration. It's pretty interesting. Alright, welcome to the Valley of Rocks. Interesting. Bunch of rocks everywhere. Looks like they've been uh, weathered down by rain and wind. And now, the landscape's really special because not only do you have the rocks, but you got like snow capped mountains right behind you. You have a crazy rainstorm on the other side. A lot of stuff going on. And a little break here after my five hours of pounding my body with this horrible road. Uh, it hurts so much. And as always, I am alone. There's nobody here. Literally no one except me, myself, and my drone. Actually, I created a really funny hashtag a few years ago. The drone is my only friend. It makes a lot of sense today because who else is gonna stand there and take a picture of me? Nobody except my drone. If you're thinking about driving the Bolivian Altiplano, do yourself a favor, don't. <laughs> Please don't. It's, uh, it's, it's a real challenge. It's not easy, it's not for everybody. Now if you do a tour, you do it for three days. I mean, it's really easy to do. You pay your money, you have fun, you have food, you got shelter. Everything's taken care of for you. I drive across it like crazy me. 
yeah, it is not easy. It is a huge challenge. It's a challenge because you have to carry so much extra fuel, so much extra water. You gotta carry all your food for the next three days. And most importantly, there are no maps. There's no way of knowing if you're going the right way. You basically have to figure out with your instinct, with the snow-capped mountains, with the geographic features, if you're going the right way or not. What I like to do is I like to wait for an hour or so and wait for tour cars to basically pull out of this random road out of nowhere. And I just basically follow the way they came out. And that's how I get in. Google Maps is nice, but it doesn't do a great job on here. Uh, but certainly this is one of the most remote places uh, on Earth and one of the best rides, in my opinion, for any motorcyclist. What makes this place really special is that it's so remote and unfortunately it also makes it really, really dangerous. If you're not prepared and you're not physically fit, able to do this, don't do it. Do yourself a favor and don't, don't get yourself in trouble, okay? You know, I'm a young guy and uh, I'm struggling physically. So if you're uh, an older person with a larger bike, uh, with less understanding of this area and what it means to be out here, um, I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> now the first time I came here I had no idea what I was doing and I got so lost and it was a pretty crazy experience. Worst case scenario you want to do this by yourself, I suggest the following. Go to town, go to Uyuni and buy a tour, but follow them on your motorcycle. Make a deal with them where it basically says carry my food, fuel, clothes, everything I need so I can have the lightest bike possible. Just follow them and they had to do everything for you. And they'll wait for you if something happens, you got security. I did that but only for a day, only to kind of get to know the entrance and where I was going, but I didn't do it for the full three days. Anyway, if you don't know what you're doing, I recommend you do that. Just spend the money, be safe, don't go crazy, and follow the tour guide.